Good morning everyone and welcome to My Stitch With Me. Today is Wednesday morning and I've just sat down to get ready to do some of this um, beautiful chart. This is called Happy Village and I can't remember the name of the artist now. Oh yes, Irina Orlov, I think it is. And this is a heaven and earth design chart. I'm working it on 25 count, two over one, tenth stitch. And I can pop in a picture of how this looked previously um, before I came back and did all this extra work on it, which I think looks really, really cool. I started working a diagonal from the top left corner and I was working along diagonal then the diagonals were kind of getting a bit too long for me so I decided I wanted to go back to doing my blocks or columns which I tend to just do sort of randomly sometimes so there isn't always rhyme or reason as to which direction I'm going in sometimes um, I started going along the top now I'm sort of working down a little bit sometimes I seem to enjoy a structure of which direction I'm going and other times I don't really care. <laughs> I think it just depends on the day and the mood, which I think a lot of you might resonate with. Okay, so I'm going to work on this column here. So I'll zoom in a little bit for you to see where I'm at. Now, I've parked a lot of threads prior to starting this so that I don't have to be rustling through my threads to try and find the colors etc and I can just keep going I may have to bring this in a little bit slightly for me to be able to see what I'm doing there we are I think I'm I should be able to manage with that so awkward awkward too okay that's not a great start I've already got tangled kind of a little bit awkward to get my head around the camera which is right in front of my nose that's the only thing with the stitch with me's is that you can find it's a little bit awkward sometimes there I think that might be okay as long as I'll try not to bump the camera because my nose is right on top of it which is quite hilarious if it was switched the other way you'd get a really interesting view Okay, so I do need to talk a little bit about this chart, actually, um, because I have made a decision about it that some of you may not be aware of. Well, none of you are going to be aware of, actually, because I haven't even mentioned it. And I've been looking at all of my whips in great detail recently. And thinking about it and coming up coming upon a decision as to what I want to do going forward because it is now we've reached the middle of 2024 so I like to think about where it is I want to to work you know what is it I want to do going forward I think I might will I park this one where does this get parked okay so I have to kind of make decisions about you know, which charts I'm really enjoying, which ones I'm not enjoying so much, which ones I don't want to continue, which ones I do want to continue, you know, all that all that jazz that you you tend to think about once you start um, collecting too many for coverage. Unfortunately, you need to make decisions about how you're going to progress. And I really hate UFOing my work I think everybody does I don't think anybody likes UFOing anything but there comes a time when you just don't have a choice and you have to just put aside something now don't worry I'm not UFOing anything at the moment but hang on I have to stop talking when I count <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight nine I don't know if I'm gonna well I park on the right because I've got such a nice clean space no, I don't think I will, because the thread is just going to get in my way at the moment anyway. Okay, so 
So I want to talk about sort of what I've decided to do with regards to my whips. So I've collected quite a few full coverage over time and there are currently two charts that I want to do that I haven't really started. When I say really started, I mean not properly started. I had kitted up a while ago and I think I was tempted ages ago to get started and I did put a few sneaky stitches into them but I then put them away until I was ready to address this what am I going to do because I can't do everything right I just can't do any, everything so I've been trying to work out a system for myself that's just going to work in the long run and I do have time plenty of time I just need to know what my system is going to be so I don't I didn't really want to UFO any of the ones that I'm currently working on but I do want to look at them objectively and see how, what I can actually manage physically I mean as in the actual physical stitching from day to day what is it I can be happy with and content with and not feel like I'm lagging behind or that I'm doing stuff I don't really want to be doing and etc cetera, etc cetera. you know what it's like it's it's a bit of a headache sometimes and I have started a new one because I just think that it's been so long since I did I feel like there's no joy if I don't but then I do have to get to that point of let's make a reasonable assessment of everything and a reasonable plan. So with regards to this one, and I'll tell you a bit more about the ones I've got in sort of in the rotation, which are coming back into the rotation or might be going out of the rotation in a moment. With regards to this one, this is a very, very big chart. And I'm going to put a picture up on the screen. So you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm actually going to go and look on my pattern keeper. The PDF, it's, yeah, 31 inches by 17 and a quarter inches. It is huge. And I've barely, you know, I mean, it looks like I've done a lot, but it's not much in the grand scheme of things. I don't even think that I have. Reached 5%. Where am I at? Uh, oh, well, I'll have to talk a bit about the percentages now. So what I decided to do, basically, is I'm going to crop this picture in half, sort of somewhere where it looks, where the crop actually works for me. And I'm only going to work on that part of the chart. And there's two reasons for this. One, because I just feel like it's just too big and it's going to take too long to finish this one. And also, I've got other big charts that I want to continue with and finish. And I just don't want to have so many huge charts on my wall. So with a crop of this one, I feel satisfied that I'm getting what I want, which is the main picture or the part of the picture. You know, the essence of the picture is there. You can see what it's all about. I love it. I don't need to have the entire thing. Of course, in an ideal world, it would be great if I wanted to spend the next 10 years on the whole thing. But I, I've i got other plans now. So rather than dumping it, I think cropping it in half is a good um, compromise. That's what I'll call it. A good compromise in time and in expense. The only thing is that I have bought enough floss to do this entire chart, I think. So I feel like, well, if I'm not going to use those flosses, that's going to be, might be a little bit of waste. But no, I'm just going to add them to like the master set that I've got. Because, well, I don't think anyone's ever complained about having too many embroidery threads. <laughs> because we love them, right? And we're going to, we are going to use them. Well, hopefully use them. So I'm happy with this crop and it's fairly big enough. It's big enough even when cropped. So I wanted to get the two boats in at the bottom. Um, let me just look at the picture again. I wanted to get the two boats in. And and I like the moon. So if I'd have cropped the second half, I wouldn't have got the moons and I wouldn't have got... I like that tall... I like the first building, the one that I'm, 
I'm doing here. Um, and I like also that little building on, on top of the where the white boat is just behind it with the little like balcony or something. Anyway, it's super cute. I mean, both sides of the chart are super cute, but I mean, I've already started this side. So it makes sense to do the half of the chart that, that I've already done. It's pointless ditching this and then starting the other half because that would just that would just make no sense to me. So half of this chart is going to be cropped away. I'm going to and then I am definitely going to finish it for sure. It won't be so big. It costs an absolute fortune to frame these things, by the way. Um, even framing my mini was cost me over a hundred pounds, which is I don't know what that is in dollars. Maybe some of you are better at the conversions than I am, but and yeah, it's not cheap. So that's that one. The other thing, because I've cropped that one, I thought, well, since I finished the Thomas Kincaid and I've cropped this one in half, I can squeeze in another one. <laughs> so I've got my winter evening started and I decided I'm going to, oh, there's two other Hage charts that I really want to start. So one of them I've kitted up and I'm going to do, um, just, I'm going to start it and I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to pick it up before Christmas, but I'm aiming to have that one as a Christmas stitch because I never really have a Christmas stitch apart from my Mirabilia, which she, she tends to come out in December and she probably will again this December. So around November, December time, I go to the Christmas ones and that's the only one I've got is the Mirabilia Snow Queen. And I'm going to do this other Christmassy kind of chart and I'm going to put a picture up of it here. It's called A Christmas Carol. Um, by Dean Morrissey. Let me have a look at the information. This isn't as much of a stitch with me as is a listen to me, is it? Um, so this is <laughs> like an update. So this is a Christmas carol and it's 700 by 400, 28 inches by 16. Yeah, it's big, not as big as this happy village, but it's still big, but I'm going to bring that one out. Because I, I've had this one for a while and I absolutely have always loved A Christmas Carol. I've read the books. I've watched movies about it. I'm absolutely in love with it. So how could I not do the chart? It's just I've never actually got around to starting it or doing it. So I've just started it and I'm not too fussed about when I get to work on it. But it's at least it's there if I want to do a few stitches. Definitely want to make that a Christmas piece. And the other one I started is with a few stitches is um oh come on now I'm trying to open it up on pattern keeper view pdf is a lady sewing in an interior with which um was a heaven and earth designs freebie i think it was a heaven and earth designs freebie and i think i just think she's beautiful and again i've looked at the whole picture and i've cropped a small section away at the top which i don't think is hugely necessary it's quite a lot darker at the top of this picture so I've come down uh, about half a page from the top. So I'm just cutting away a couple of those balls that you see on the top left corner, cutting away those top, the, the two at the very top, just below that, just below that. So you're only getting the, the lower ball, bauble, whatever it is. And then the lady coming down to the lady. So I've cropped away quite a bit of that. So that's it for me. That's that's me done for the rest of the year. Those are two major decisions. So because I finished a Hade and because I've cropped Happy Village, I've decided on starting those two. The other thing that I was doing was Butterfly Ornament by, um, again, Heaven and Earth Designs. And I had thought about working on that one every day, but that soon, that idea soon dissolved because that chart is absolutely crazy with confetti and I thought I thought innocently that I would get something like 150 stitches done a day and I could finish that by the end of the year but absolutely no it took me all afternoon to get 150 stitches done I swear to you it is absolutely a nightmare of confetti I had to change colors so many times it's unreal 
not too much on the background of it but the actual butterfly itself is crazy so i thought there's no way i haven't got the time to sit here spending all afternoon on the one chart every single day i never get anything else done so i got a lot done on it when i come to do it um, an update or something I'll show you my progress on that one but apart from that that's again that plan just is going out of the window because I don't like to feel I don't feel like to feel like like I've got a chain and ball around my leg when it comes to stitching and I think that's one of the reasons why I tend to shy away from the I'm going to do so many stitches a day kind of thing because I feel like yeah, I feel like I've got a chain of ball around my leg and I have to sit down and I have to do it and I have to do it. And it's like, uh, it's kind of, kind of why the heaven and earth designs stitch along. Um, I mean, I love the, I like the chart. There's nothing wrong with the chart that I'm doing, the astrology cat, but it's kind of the whole concept of having to do it is what disturbs my brain and makes me not want to. I think a lot of people are struggling actually I know some some of some of you have said to me that you're struggling to do the salt and I think it's that I think it's just the the very fact that we are the type of individuals that don't like to be told what to do and and when it comes to something that's planned out like that yeah it, it can be a bit tedious but I have finished my my three pages and I'm on to my fourth page of that one. There was a little bit of a hoo-ha about the the amount of pages, the, what, what constituted a full page, etc. But we kind of figured that out in the end. And yeah, so my, my advice is just be careful when they say finish four full page. When they say finish four pages of the chart to be able to get to the challenge, you must make sure that they are full pages. And I think the top very right page of my chart is not a full page. And I didn't really pay attention to that. I kind of suspected it might be the case, but I thought, well, no, it's, it's still a page, isn't it? But no, apparently I could have got caught out and not met my challenge. So I hope other people out there, if you're doing it, just make sure that you're not finishing partial pages and thinking that they're full pages. And I don't see where that's actually specified, but that's why I'm kind of mentioning it. But yeah, so there's there's the thing of not wanting to feel tied down to what you're doing. Um, so I like the freedom of jiggling around a little bit. Just um, just managing things to suit myself, really. So I've also done. 50%. I've got to to 50% on Sad Fairy. I think I got to 50% a few months ago, a couple of months ago. And I was trying to get to 50% on Riverwalk Charm so that I could swap Riverwalk Charm out for Sad Fairy. And so I don't know how I'm going to work those two, either whether I'm going to do them simultaneously and try to get them both to 60%. I don't know how... How, I haven't calculated to see how many stitches I have to do to get to 60% on those charts by the end of the year. If it's too many stitches and it means I'm compromised, if it means I can't get to any of the other charts that I want to do, then I'm not going to be too happy. Um, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five. So it has to be a goal or at least a tentative goal that's flexible enough that I don't have to be chained to it every day let's put it that way so if I've I'm going to get to 50% of River Walk Charm real soon I mean that one is that one is at like now 40 48.9% or something but it just takes a lot more stitches to get to that 50% because it's a bigger chart than the other one but once I get to 50% on River Walk Charm I will be at 50% on both of those huge big charts. So I'm then thinking, let's do another smallish goal towards the end of the year. Shall I work on them simultaneously or shall I just maybe put Sad Fairy down for a month, work on Riverwalk Charm for a month and then put down Riverwalk Charm and then work. So alternate them by month. Let me know what you think. What would you do? I don't really know about that one. I haven't decided yet. Depends how many stitches are needed on both. But I do know that it, 
I need a lot more stitches on Riverwalk Charm to get to any percentage than I do with Sad Fairy. So how can I work that in? Or I was thinking maybe I could work Sad Fairy and The Christmas Carol in December. Just those two. <coughs> Excuse me, lost my voice there. I don't know, you see. But then I feel like if I want to pick her up at any other point, then that plan goes out the window as well. So, yeah, I don't know. But I've made huge amounts of progress on this one as well to be honest. Um, so percentage wise, it's a bit awkward for me to tell you because what I've done is I have, as you can see in the picture, I have marked off all the stitches that I'm not going to stitch. It was really, really easy to do, by the way. All you had to do was press down and then highlight all unfinished stitches on the entire page. And then you could mark off an entire page at a time. Because if I'd have had to do it per square, that would have taken me forever. But when I realized, in fact, I started doing it really the slow-mo method, but then I realized this is going to take me forever to mark off half a chart. Then I realized all I needed to do was mark off um, an entire page. So if you fiddle about with the buttons at the top, you can mark off an entire page without highlighting any of the symbols. So that's that was really, really helpful. Um, so showing you the, the picture, it shows, so I've marked off everything that I'm not going to stitch, which only leaves what I am going to stitch. So that's the percent. So the percentage obviously showing right now is showing that I've done 56.34%, which I haven't obviously done that much, but that's what it's showing. Cause I've, that's including what I'm marked off plus the bit I've already done. But what it does show me is what I've got left to stitch. So, so you do 100 minus the percentage that you've got there now. And that's what you have left to stitch, which is kind of the way I've figured this out. Okay, some nice bright colours coming in here. Okay, so that's kind of how I've worked it out in Pattern, pattern Keeper. Um, probably thinking, oh, you missed a stitch. Okay, so that stitch up there, I'm not going to do. I'm going to do it when I come down on this column because that one colour is all grouped around the right side, along the right column. There's no more stitches of that colour on the left column so I'll just catch it I'll catch that blank stitch when I come down on the right column it just saves me you know getting a new thread together just for the one stitch which can be a real pain as you know I mean I'll be honest up here in the sky if there is like one stitch apart from things like this star here which is necessary to have that gray stitch but if it's anywhere around this mixed up background and one stitch is a different color and it's a complete ninja stitch, I would just mow it down with the color next to it, <laughs> honestly, because it's just so not going to make much difference. But you have to be careful because I wouldn't be doing that, say, in the high detailed areas, because the reason they're high detailed is because they've got all those ninja stitches and stuff. So I do want to be careful with that. So only really in large areas of background where it doesn't really matter and it's not what I would call an essential uh, colour or an essential stitch. Okay, this this um, square here is a little bit fiddly, I have to say, because it's the, the colours seem to be going down rather than across and I'm trying to work across, so never mind. So I hope it made sense what I was explaining there about my charts and my plans, because a lot of the time I wonder if I've said it all backwards or upside down. <laughs> if there's anything you don't understand, please ask me. But basically, I'm just kind of trying to figure things out in my head. And 
And I want to bring inject a bit more excitement into it too, because I, I am a bit tired. I've been working on the same charts for four years. So I, I do get a bit tired of um, what's going on here. Holy moly. Is this going to turn into a knot? No, okay. Um, I forgot what I was saying now. I do get tired of the same charts over and over again. And now I've realized that my attention span has turned into something crazy. And I, I do need the distraction of being able to swap things out. But there's a fine line between um, having variety and being overwhelmed. And I, I always have to be careful I don't cross that line. If I cross that line, I start to get overwhelmed. And then I start to think I've got too much, too much on the go. So I have to then rein it all back and look at the situation again. So there's a bit of advice for you. If you do feel overwhelmed, just sit down with everything. Pick out the things that you really, really want to do. Put aside the things that you don't want to do and just put them aside. They're not going to get harmed in any way. They're not like newborn babies that you're just going to leave in the crib. Just put them aside and then come back to them when you feel that, um, that you're ready for them. Whatever you do, don't just like UFO something on a whim. Think long and hard about, will I maybe in a year's time want to pick this back up again? It's possible. If there's a small possibility you will, then just put it away. But then sometimes putting it away, putting something away that you know you're not going to stitch just has a certain effect of kind of irritating you because you know it's sitting there and it's kind of, you know, making you feel bad for putting it away. So there are times when it's necessary to actually just either give something to somebody else to finish or to give hand it into a charity shop. Actually, charity shop that I was volunteering in were pretty good for having, for taking in charts and things that had been started and not finished. And I did pick up a couple of them and I never finished them myself, but <laughs> a couple of small things I brought in one time. Um, but they had only been started with like two or three stitches and, you know, people just then either lose interest straight away or they, they, something happens in their life that they suddenly can't do it. And rather than chuck it in the bin, they just, they just go into the charity shop and say, here, look, here is a, just a few stitches in here or whatever. We even had, I think I even saw something coming in that was nearly finished like they only had like I don't know maybe a couple of thousand stitches left and there it was they didn't want to finish it so you know for a small amount 50 pence or whatever a dollar people would come in and they would take it and finish it I don't see anything wrong with that it's a nice thing to do rather than just burn them or throw them out but See, I think it would be expensive to bundle away all my stuff to somebody else to finish. Um, and I would be horrified that they'd have to see the back of my work. <laughs> so there's that as well, right? Actually, the back of my work is not too bad, to be honest. I have seen neat to the point of obsessive and I have seen the back look like a furry animal. And mine, mine is kind of somewhere in between. It's not a fairy animal and it's not the neatest. It's livable. It's okay. I'm not hugely fussed about it. Um, where am I at now? Do you know what? There's, there's, there's a symbol on my pattern keeper that is no symbol. It has nothing in it. It's like a blank square. And it's confusing me because I feel like... Blank squares in paper patterns are, are, are like zero stitches, zero color. There's no color that go there. And in this one, there obviously is, because when I highlight it, it's got a, a DMC number, but it's actually blank on the screen. But it's still confusing me, because somewhere in my, my brain, we're thinking paper pattern, blank square, no stitch. Well, there can't be no stitch, can there, on a, on a full coverage like this? But I'm trying to count through the blank spaces and that's that's confusing me. So one, two, down. I think I've done that stitch. 
Wait. <laughs> See, I'm getting so confused. Okay, no, I haven't done that stitch. We'll get there eventually. Okay. So, I come down and I cut. So, I basically told you all my plans or the sort of today's plans and things that potentially I'm interested in doing. Um, still continuing with rotations, but bringing in Sad Fairy. Because I've wanted to for a while, but the days have just been going by and I... I just had out what I had out and I was picking those up and trying to get my river walk to the 50% mark, which is so, so close now. Um, and I know that if I start swapping them around again, then I'd be less likely to want to bring river walk jump out because I think, oh, you know, I just, I haven't done anything in this one for three months and I, it can just wait another three months. You know, that kind of mindset, which I didn't want to do wanted to get to my goal but looks like I'm getting to it sooner than I'd expected I expected it was going to take me to the rest of this year actually to get to 50% because it's such a big chart but I really pushed ahead with it and I think I did probably 5% or 6% just in the last few weeks but when you push ahead with one project the other ones will take longer that's just common sense. So that's just something that you have to remember when you start new ones, which is why I'm trying to um, trying to satisfy the itch, but I'm also trying to be reasonable and sensible and figure out where in my stitching life I can fit things in. So yes, my friends, it's all about compromise, isn't it? And how to deal with those crazy new starts <laughs> but I think the main thing is the main thing is that you're enjoying what you're stitching on everybody keeps saying that and I know that in my head but there is the the potential to feel a bit bad when you're not getting much progress on something because you you know that you wanted to so yeah it can be a disappointment The other thing that really bugs me is that I have all these intentions and then maybe I wake up tomorrow and I don't want to stitch on any of them or I don't want to stitch on anything except something that I haven't stitched on for years. And it's like, well, this is not how I felt yesterday. Why do I feel like this now? It's so annoying because I had everything planned out really nicely. And today I've gone on a completely different, you know, path. My brain's gone in a completely different way, like being disobedient, just decided, nah, forget all that. I want to do something else. That is frustrating, I tell you. Very frustrating. <laughs> Let me know if that's happened to you. Okay, I feel like I've missed a stitch somewhere, have I? Not paying attention again. Okay, so what? why is this one parked here and it's not, uh, not parked in my pattern keeper? I don't think I've done this row. One, two, three, four, five. It's row five. No. See, too much chit chat, and we start to lose lose our path. On to the weather report in Edinburgh. Well, it's mm, not too bad. Could be better. It's a bit cloudy, but not dark clouds, just sort of light grey. And the air looks still, so there's no wind. So pretty decent day to go out walking or whatever, but you wouldn't get a suntan. So <laughs> all in all, it's quite fair. So I don't mind um, taking a walk this afternoon, possibly if it doesn't rain. Oh, yes, and I went on a little trip on Sunday, which I wanted to tell you about, which was quite interesting. So I went to a 
I went with a friend to a cat uh, rescue, cat rescue place. So a little bit of a drive away and they had all these gorgeous little cats inside. I mean, it was very clean. They, they looked very well cared for, beautiful cats. So we didn't go just to see the cats because if we went just to see the cats, we would come back with six cats, six cats each. But there was, they were holding like a market stalls with crafts and stuff and books and crafts and yeah, cakes and things. So we all went selling jams and marmalades. So we went to look around the market stores and then we got to see the cats as a bonus. And there was a little bit of a queue to see the cats, but we did manage to see the cats. And oh my God, the cats. And you just want to, you just want to collect them all up in a big bundle and bring them home. Um, but no, I just, I cannot, I'm in an apartment and I think one cat is enough. One cat is enough for an apartment. I can't do two, three cats. It just would be too much. So, but it was lovely to see them. And there was a gorgeous gray. I don't know what breed of cat it was. It's got like a little squash nose and oh my goodness, beautiful gray fur, really fluffy. And I thought, oh my goodness, this will look, this is like, this is like the perfect pairing match to my, my rag doll. <laughs> um, but they, they didn't sort of, I mean, they were behind these like little gates, so you couldn't really pick them up or anything. Not that, that you should be able to, because like everybody's a stranger, right? When they come to see the cats, we all know that cats don't generally like a lot of strange people. But they look so cute. Some of them were curled up in little balls and others were, others were eating and others were just like staring at the people going past. We felt so sorry for them. Um, it was very, very hard not to want to take them. Or at least one of them. But yeah, you can't, if you can't, you can't, you know. And they're very costly to keep now. The insurance and oh, it's just, yeah. Very costly to keep. But it was a nice trip and I enjoyed it. And um, and I did get to look around the stalls and I got, <laughs> oh, funnily enough, my friend and I made a beeline for this basket of cross-stitch patterns and we picked out all these patterns and, <laughs> oh, goodness me. Goodness me, I never think, I don't know if I'll ever get around stitching them, but I thought I have to have them at this price because they were practically giving them away. And they were they were just like little little booklets. Um, and uh, there were some really good ones there. They cost nothing. Um, so we got about five or six, I think. So in my next video, I'm going to show those to you anyway, because it'd be nice to show them off. But I don't know if I'd ever get around to stitching them, to be honest, with my current plans and the new start plans and all the plans. Yeah. I wish I had not more time. I wish. I, well, yeah, time is time is what you need, isn't it? Time is what you need. To do all of these things, to do all the things. No wonder people just get burnt out because <laughs> there's so many things we want to do. So there we have the little update. I don't think I've left anything out. I'm going to have a look and see what other charts I've got and if I've got any ideas about them. So... I still have got, um, so the butterfly ornament, yeah, that one's just, it just near killed me. But I'm going to show it to you in um, in a future video. Well, not too, not too in the future, but in another video, I will show you that one. And I still want to do, I've got still tree of life in the picture, in the run. It's still there. And it's not one that I UFO'd. And at some point in the future, this isn't going to be now till probably next year or whatever, that one's going to come out again. But I have to finish. I have to get closer to the end of something to pick up something else now, I think.
but I wanted to inject a couple of new ones just to keep my interest because I know that if I don't, I'm just going to get bored and fed up because these big ones, you're going to be seeing them again and again and again for a long, long time. I don't really, I don't really gravitate towards little charts. Never really did. Um, I do like some, I do like the dimensions and some of those, but they're, they are real beasts to work, I tell you. When I did my Aurora cabin, I thought it nearly killed me with all the multiple threads and blends. Um, there was a real grind towards the end. And I've just, now I've started this Mareczka piece, Mareczka. And uh, I really love it. So I do want to do, I want to pick that one up at least once a week twice a week at best I want to do a few stitches on that one so don't really have huge amounts of works on the go at the moment it's just figuring out what I want to do with them that is my my thing at the moment so I'm coming on to this new clock tower I think is it clock tower I'm not sure what it is you mock up no there's no clock on it it's just a tall turreted thing building yeah so yeah i've hit that one already which is pretty good i think i've got loads done on this piece so it's hard to tell what the percentage is of this because i've already added marked off the rest of it yeah, that was all a bit confusing. Um, where did I park that thread? Is it under here? So sometimes you feel like your whips are just on a merry-go-round, don't you? They just one one gets on, one gets on, and one comes off. Then you do a little round of stitching and then one come one a new one comes in, another one comes off, and then on and off, hopping up, hopping up and down. <laughs> it's quite amusing. Sometimes my husband says, What are you working on now? And I'm like, Oh my god, don't even ask me that question, please, because I can't formulate an answer that's coherent. I'm just he knows I swap around a lot. So he knows I swap around so much he doesn't really bother asking me anymore what I'm doing because he says, I don't think you know what you're doing, do you? <laughs> yeah, you're right, I don't. <laughs> just doing whatever. It's quite amusing. Okay. Lost. Why did I not have this colour? Ugh. We'll try, we'll try with this. I'm going to have to sort out my box of threads again because my lovely cat likes to try and get into my box now. My box with my threads that I've got beside me here. And she really wants to squeeze herself in and be a part of the whole thing. But she's like three times bigger than my box. And it's full of threads, so it's not ideal. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to put a little bit of footage of what she does once I get my box out and start getting prepared to stitch. So you'll get a little bit of video at the end. Because I know not everybody likes cats or cares about cats, so that's why I put it at the end. And... You can, you can see it then. Where am I parking here? One, two, three, four, left. One, two, three, four, left. Um, this is a slow-mo square because of this bit on the, this red bit is all like, let's have seven different red colours here. As you can see and 
I don't do cross country because I just get lost whenever I do cross country, no matter how many times. I attempt it because I, I find sometimes I feel like that's what I really want to do. In the end, it doesn't work out for me because there's all these little gaps and I don't like the little gaps. And I feel, I think gaps can make people anxious. Some people can get anxious with the gaps. Whereas true cross country stitchers are completely fine with it. I wish I was one of those. Parking up here. No, I think I've got something parked in the wrong place. Well, we'll find out when I get there. That's really the worst. When you start parking in the wrong place, you're in trouble. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one for the moment and come back to it. Well, we have nearly succeeded in finishing a, another square. I want to come down to here and then I might finish this little block and then I'll have a nice square here. Then I can maybe go back up the top. It's nice to have a few options, I think. I really love the diagonal. I mean, the diagonal really appeals to me and I love stitching the diagonal. But I think I've I've tried to figure out what it is about a diagonal that I stopped doing it. And I think it, for me, this might not be for everybody who does diagonals. For me, it's when the diagonal gets so long that it feels like an uphill climb to the top of the mountain. And I just think, oh my goodness, I've got to start all the way from the top again. And go all the way down again. And it just gets longer and longer each time. <laughs> so the remedy to that and it's something that I'm going to apply now in future, I think, is to make my diagonals shorter. Even though I prefer the look of longer diagonals, I think making them shorter is a solution to feeling daunted about the length of them. I mean, to be stitching the actual length, not the look of it. I love the look of them. But I just get this sort of shudder when I come to the start of a new diagonal and it's hugely long and I know it's going to take me ages to get to the bottom so I think I've I started doing five squares five squares in diagonal and then continue along and then start again from the bottom left going across so I think five or even ten squares up to ten for me doesn't feel so daunting I think I just that's just kind of what I figured out in my head sometimes you have to think about what it is about what you're doing that's preventing you from wanting to do it what is it that you're um, what is your jam basically trying to find that is is a journey in itself it really is now, I know that the two over one tent is my go-to. This, for me, is my relaxing. Going down in columns, or going down in diagonals is, for me, the best way because I, I always get so many distractions with TV and the cat and, and family and the phone and the doorbell going and, you know, delivery drivers and, oh, also, and having to pop out and pop in. And I just find that I know exactly where I'm at I know exactly where I left it there's no guesswork about where I'm going and which direction I'm going and I, I not so much counting I'm just and yet it is a little bit slower absolutely but it's a compromise again for me I know where I am and <clears throat> and if I make a mistake, it's only within that square. So sometimes I can just fudge it and say, oh, well, just leave the mistake. No one's going to notice. Yeah, so. I mean, if I put one, one different red stitch in there, are you really going to notice? I mean, seriously, no one's going to know. 
Now, where is this parked? One, two, three, four. Yeah, just sometimes when you get too many threads, I know this drives people mad, when you get too many threads, um, I think I parked one wrong here. I'm going to have to correct that because it would drive me mad. This one is parked wrong. Too many threads can really drive you a bit loopy, but it's just part of the process. And I kind of learned how to manage things now. I know I've chosen a particularly bad square for this session, but all around here and everywhere above here has been totally stitching with these. Not too much confetti. There, that's better. Just one thread parked in the wrong place can really mess things up for you seriously now back to where i was now you're probably thinking wow you haven't parked any threads on the right hand side well to be honest i haven't needed to because i'm still going down with the thread if I didn't have a colour here, I could I could have parked on the other side, but I'm actually now I think going to go on to the other side and do a stitch because right here there is one red one of this colour. And the only other place that red one occurs is somewhere down here. Nearly a whole square away, so I see, I think that there's just no point in not, not doing that stitch. Otherwise, it's going to go a stitch up here, stitch down here, and then it's going to be carrying thread quite a bit when I come down to the next column. So, and there's another stitch here. And this one. Where can I park it? Just below. Okay, so yeah. This side is fine on the left side of the square. The right side of the square is a bit crazy. I've only got a little bit of this thread left. Um... My nose is itching me today. Surprise, surprise. I have to end this thread too, because there's nothing else going on with this thread. So I'd be tempted to take an antihistamine, but they make me very drowsy and I don't know what's worse, actually, just being all drowsy and feeling rubbish or having an itchy nose and congestion issues and still feeling rubbish. So which rubbish do I choose? That's the question. I don't really enjoy feeling sleepy when I don't want to sleep. Stuff I want to do. Because I have stuff to do once I'm finished here. And I have a friend coming to stay with me in a couple of weeks. So I want to get things. You know what it's like when you've got someone come and stay with you. You want to get things cleaned up. Nice big spring clean. Get into all those corners that you maybe overlook. Get a few cobwebs out of those dark corners and tidy up. I mean, I'm generally quite a tidy person, but when someone turns up, you want things to be nice and bright and clean. So I'm going to do that before she comes. Yeah, 
here come the blank squares again just to confuse me <laughs> okay so park there so i hope you're enjoying this stitch with me and my crazy explanations about what i'm trying to do <laughs> like i said this is all like tentative plans and I'm just figuring out options but don't take anything set in stone because a true stitcher knows that anything can happen. I think I've missed a stitch somewhere. Well, you know what? These colours, to me, I'm not being funny, but these colours are all looking very similar so I'm going to just go with this. I think I might have missed a stitch with the other. That's what I mean about when you're in a little area like this and you've got three very light blues on the go. Do you really have to spend half an hour figuring out your one stitch that went wrong somewhere? I don't think so. I mean, I can't see the difference between these two colours. I'm not kidding you. These are two different colours. Maybe there is a slight difference. Yeah, there is definitely a difference, but if one stitch was the wrong one, would you even notice? I mean, seriously. Having said that, I wouldn't take that liberty too far. Now, I'm going to end this one. I'm hoping I haven't switched them both around now, and I've got... I'm just going to check that, actually. So this is this is three three two five. I'm going to check that it is three three two five because there's every chance that I've switched them over by mistake. No, there's another three three two five. Yeah, and that's definitely it. That's that one. Good grief! Who knew that so many you could get so many shades of blues? I think we're going good, guys. We're getting to the bottom of this getting to the bottom of this square um, so let me know what you've been working on whilst you've been stitching I like uh, when you comment and tell me what you're stitching on because then I go and look up the chart to see what chart it is that you've been stitching on if I can find it this can now be cut away And who is starting a new chart? I love to hear of new starts. <laughs> I live vicariously through those of you that do new starts. Although I'm having a few of my own. Do, do, do. So I'm going to be doing quite a few Stitch With Me's. Um, and then once I get my visitors, I won't be doing it for a while, maybe a week. And then I will carry on. But I do want to, I do enjoy coming and stitching with you guys, so... If you'll have me, I will come back more frequently. That is an interesting amount of red colours, I have to say. I hope I haven't mixed those up as well. Well, I'm not going to start thinking down that road, because if I do, it'll just get a headache. So let's just carry on. There's always the fear that you've parked a red one, two red ones in the wrong place or one in the wrong place and you're mixing them up. No, I don't want that to happen. And you can also tell me which chart you'd like to see me do a stitch with me on because I just randomly pick one usually. But if you said, hey, 
why don't you stitch on i like to see you stitching on i don't know choose anything except that butterfly ornament because that butterfly chart drove me mad it's far too far too confetti and i think i'm only going to bring that one out every so often now and put a couple of threads in until i get past those crazy confetti bits i think anyone who's done one of those butterfly ornaments will know what i'm talking about now i've got a stitch here that i've missed so i'm going to go back with this blue one because it is a blue one but i don't know which blue it is but i'm going to go with this i'm going to go with this blue <laughs> it definitely was not a red and that will do fine so we're on the bottom row here yeah so just let me know say hey i i really like you to do a bit of stitching on i don't know sad fairy or let's have a look astrology cat i'm starting to work on the fourth page and i've got or would you like me to come and work a little bit on the new ones i mentioned christmas carol or sewing lady in an interior which is actually a free chart i don't think you can get it now anymore she did bring it out as a free chart or oh i don't know i don't have much going on here i've pared down everything that i'm working on because i want to see more progress on the stuff Um, I've also got Paris Romance in my stash, which is by, let's have a look, Roseanne Kalustian. It's an artisty piece and I love it, but I started this one across country and I'm, I, it, it'll, it's going to take me ages to get it back into some form of sensible. <laughs> so that one really, I started cross country. I don't know when I'm going to pick that one back up. I will do at some point, but yeah, this is where I'm at at the moment, so let me know. Let's get back and finish this um, this little bit. I think that's everything I had to say. I don't think I've left anything out now. I'll probably, as soon as I stop recording, I'll be like, oh my God, I wanted to say this, or... I wanted to say that. Okay. My nose is going to drive me mad. Um, one, two, three, four. I shouldn't just have four stitches there. I think I've done it again. I've gone a bit loopy with the blue. Okay. Do you know what? It's those blank spaces that drive me mad. Do not like blank spaces in the chart. Not on a digital chart anyway. Okay. See how slow it goes when you've got all this confetti. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, why I have cropped this chart in half. <laughs> quite simply for that reason because i don't want to be a stitching corpse i'm not that young any longer i want to get to do i, I want to get to stitch the things i want to stitch at least for now if i never get around to finishing it well never mind but i want to stitch the things i want to stitch And I've also noticed a lot of new charts coming out, new hades, new releases, new everything. Just beware, folks. I think I've missed a stitch here. What not which one is that? Five. One, two, three, four, five. I parked it without doing it. It's this one. See? It's this one. How did I manage that? To be fair, I don't think I've done a bad job in a very high confetti square whilst I've been chatting away. I 
I will park this one again. I'm going to catch that stitch that I missed. There we go. There we are. I have finished square. Woohoo! Did that take me an hour? I'm not sure how long that took me. Okay, guys, so that's me done for the moment. And thank you so much for joining me. Really enjoyed it. So let me know what you think. And um, I will be back soon again to do another stitch with me. So now I'm going to switch over so you can see Misty and her shenanigans. Oh, she really is a lovely, affectionate thing. I shouldn't shouldn't be mean about her. <laughs> Don't know where she's gone at the moment, but she's not beside me right now. But yeah, this is Misty when I come to sit down and stitch. She's a real, real sweetie, affectionate cat. Okay then, so I will see you soon again, guys. Thank you so much. Take care and have a lovely rest of the week. Bye. That's it. Are you having a good bonding session with my threads? <laughs> good girl. You're going to sit with me while I do some stitching. Yeah. Misty, you're on camera. You're on camera, Misty. your favorite place isn't it yeah. I think I'd better get started what do you think what do you think what do you think oh, such a lovely little thing now you're gonna put all your hairs into my threads all your hairs into my threads so I get a lovely mix of shades huh so my black's not going to be so black. My black isn't going to be so black with you. No.